breaking news in Lexington tonight. The man wanted for a deadly crash in Tennessee was arrested in Hamburg, and we have exclusive video of the arrest. Tonight, we're tracking the investigation into a man's death here in Frankfurt that police say is suspicious. The jury has announced its sentence for the man convicted of the Colorado Theater shooting massacre. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good evening to you. It is a busy night. Tonight, the search for a man wanted in connection to a crash that killed six people in Tennessee has ended right here in Lexington. Only WKYT was there as police and U.S. Marshals took Benjamin Brewer into custody a few hours ago. They arrested him in Hamburg. Earlier this week, a grand jury in Hamilton County, Tennessee, indicted him on six counts of vehicular homicide. Monique Blair joins us live from Hamburg with the breaking details. Monique? Well, Amber, the scene is now clear, but a little bit before 9 o'clock this evening, U.S. Marshals spotted 39-year-old Benjamin Scott Brewer inside of a car in front of the parking lot here in front of Gordman's in the Hamburg Pavilion. Brewer was arrested. Only WKYT was there after Brewer was arrested and put into a cruiser. Police say he didn't cooperate, so he was moved from that cruiser to a paddy wagon. And he was cooperative up until we placed him in a cruiser. Uh, he did kick a window, causing some damage uh, to the cruiser, and at that point we called for the uh, transport wagon to take him to the jail. According to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, on June 26th, Brewer was impaired while driving an 18-wheeler when he smashed into several vehicles, killing six people. It happened in Hamilton County in Tennessee. A grand jury then charged Brewer with six counts of vehicular homicide, four counts of reckless aggravated assault, one count of DUI, one count of speeding, and one count of false report. On Thursday, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation placed Brewer on the most wanted list. Anytime you're able to help, especially someone who's wanted on such serious charges, you know you're helping the uh, agencies looking for him and also helping to uh, hopefully provide some closure for uh, the victims. And now Lexington police say Brewer will face charges here as well. We actually anticipate more charges based on what we found here today. Uh, and at some point, I assume he'll be extradited back to Tennessee based on the uh, charges there. Now, Lexington police say there was another person in the car with Brewer when he was arrested, but right now that person has not been charged and is still being questioned. Reporting live in Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Monique, thank you. Now to another breaking story in Lexington. Someone has been rushed to the hospital with serious injuries after being hit by a car. It happened about an hour ago on New Circle Road at Bryan Avenue. This is a live look now at that scene. Lexington police have called in their crash reconstruction unit and they're asking drivers to avoid that area for now. There is no word on the condition of the person injured. Keep checking WKYT.com for the very latest updates. And also breaking tonight, firefighters are trying to figure Figure out what caused a fire at a Laurel County factory. The fire started earlier tonight at ASIN Automotive Casting on Highway 552, just south of London. Multiple fire departments were called to the scene. Laurel County Emergency Management Director Abby Hale tells us the fire is now out and no one was injured, but there's no word on how much damage the fire caused. A man is found dead in a Franklin County home, and police think it could be a homicide. Tonight, we're learning more about the investigation. WKYT broke this story at 4. Frankfurt police say they found the man's body in an apartment on Deepwood Drive this afternoon. New tonight, Garrett Weimer talks to one of the man's friends. It's our top story at 11. Some are in shock after what they saw here today. For someone so close, you just can't believe it, can't get it through your head. You just don't know what to think. Uh, I just, it's awful. Police say a neighbor found the man's body inside his apartment. Investigators remained at the apartment for hours into Friday evening. Police have not released how they believe the man was killed, but they say they're investigating it as a homicide. Different evidentiary things on the scene here that we've noticed have led us to believe that it could potentially be that, so we're treating it as such. I talked to several neighbors who live around here with their families, with kids. They say what happened here has shaken them up, nearly to the point of wanting to move. For those who knew the man. Good guy, like a father figure to me, like a grandfather to my kids. Took us out to eat for birthdays. Uh, if we needed anything, he was always there. 
Now they're left with a lot of questions and a strong desire, they say, to see justice. I would just like for whoever done this to come forward, turn yourself in. You know who you are or, or what you've done. You know, just turn yourself in. You know what you've done to a good person. In Frankfurt, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. So far, the victim's identity has not yet been released. New tonight, investigators have identified a man found dead outside a school in Madison County. Richmond police say the body of 48-year-old Kenneth Hensley of Richmond was found yesterday near a baseball field at Cottle Middle School. Police say the body has been taken to the medical examiner's office for an autopsy, but the results likely won't be back for four weeks. Investigators say they couldn't find any obvious signs of trauma or injury. Richmond police ask anyone who may have seen Hensley when Wednesday night to give them a call. After deliberating for hours, a jury in Colorado returned tonight with its sentence for convicted Colorado theater shooter James Holmes. The jury couldn't agree on the death penalty, so instead, Holmes will spend the rest of his life in prison. New at 11, Terry Okita has reaction to the sentence. James Holmes showed no emotion as he learned his fate for committing one of the worst mass shootings in U.S. history. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. The same jury of nine women and three men convicted Holmes last month of murdering 12 people and wounding 70 others at an Aurora movie theater in July 2012. Holmes' sentencing brings to an end a 15-week trial that began in April. I still think death is justice for what that guy did, but the system said otherwise, and I honor that. Robert Sullivan is the grandfather of six-year-old Veronica Moser Sullivan, the youngest shooting victim. Sullivan says Holmes life sentence will never give his family closure. That's not justice. You know, he's, leave, he's living, he's breathing, and our loved ones are gone. But Holmes' defense attorney argued his mental illness pushed him to kill, and he should not be executed for his delusions. It is easier to ask you to kill a monster than it is a sick human being. The 27-year-old will now live and die in prison. Terry Okita for CBS News, Los Angeles. Holmes was seen smiling and mouthed thank you to his attorneys after the judge dismissed the court. He will be formally sentenced during a hearing that begins August 24th. Well, after a wet week, we are finally getting a chance to dry out, and the Saturday forecast is looking really good after a foggy start, though. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hi, Chris. Hey, Amber, wrapping up our work week with a lot of clouds out there today, but temperatures that were very pleasant couldn't get out of the 70s for most of central and eastern Kentucky. We'll take that during what should be the dog days of summer. Late evening thermometers are down into the upper 60s as of right now. The occasional 70s still into parts of eastern Kentucky where we have just a little more in the way of some cloud cover. Overall, though, some very nice weather across the region this evening. We look at Defender, and I've got the clouds on there because that thick overcast that we had earlier in the day going by the wayside, just some high-level ice crystal clouds that are across parts of northern and northeastern sections of the region now. Something to keep in mind as skies continue to clear up tonight with a wet ground. We're going to see some fog try to develop first thing tomorrow morning, especially the farther south that we go. Fog could be quite thick at times by 11, 12 o'clock or so tomorrow. A lot of that stuff is beginning to uh, dissipate, leaving us with a little sunshine and those temperatures tomorrow afternoon that'll make a run into the middle 80s. I've got a taste of September showing up in the seven day forecast. We will track that for you, Amber, coming up in a few minutes. All right, Chris, thanks so much. Investigators think wet roads played a role in a crash that killed a Kentucky State Trooper. It happened early this morning on Highway 210 in LaRue County, not far from the Greene County line. Police say Sergeant David Gibbs lost control of his cruiser in a curve and hit a Jeep going in the opposite direction. They say he died at the scene. Police say Sergeant Gibbs will be remembered for his sense of humor and hard work. It's very emotional. Um, we love one another, we're a community, we're a family, and we take any loss within that family uh, very personal. Police say the driver of the Jeep suffered non-life-threatening injuries. They say Gibbs was 
uh, not was married and did not have children. Tomorrow, the search will resume for a missing camper in the Red River Gorge. Josh Adkins disappeared from the Coomer Ridge campground area last Saturday. Crews suspended the search earlier this week, but they'll pick back up tomorrow. Also, the Wolf County Search and Rescue Team is warning people helping in the search to be on the lookout for rattlesnakes. The team posted this video from earlier this summer on Facebook of a rattlesnake uh, from one of the trails in that area. We want to update you on some breaking news we told you about at the top of this newscast. This is exclusive video of a man wanted for a deadly crash in Tennessee being arrested here in Lexington. Lexington police and U.S. Marshals worked together to arrest 39-year-old Benjamin Brewer tonight at Hamburg. A grand jury in Chattanooga, Tennessee indicted Brewer on six counts of vehicular homicide earlier this week. In June, police say Brewer was driving under the influence when they say he caused a crash that killed six people. Go to WKYT com for more information. Tonight, it appears the Center Point project in downtown Lexington will be moving forward. This afternoon, Mason Miller, an attorney for the city, said, quote, the developers have reached an agreement in principle with a third party to develop the project. Miller wouldn't say who the third party is, only that more details would be released next week. People who work around the Center Point block say today's news made them happy. It will be an asset to the city once that hole is something's done with it. Um, it hurts us because pe who wants, there's no parking around us. We reached out to developer Dudley Webb's attorney tonight, but he had no comment about the new developments. The city gave Webb 90 days to work out things with a third party. Those 90 days expired earlier this week. New tonight, investigators say the latest search for a missing Nelson County mother has turned up nothing. Search crews spent the last few days looking for Crystal Rogers around Sportsman Lake in Marion County, but they say they didn't find any clues. The Nelson County Sheriff says at this point, no new searches are being planned unless other leads come up. Rogers disappeared July 3rd. Her family is offering a $71,000 reward in the case. Just in time for the new school year, an interim principal has been named for Bryan Station High School. Fayette County school leaders say James McMillan has been appointed to the position. He spent the last three years as an associate principal at Tates Creek Middle School. School leaders also named Carl Hayden as the interim associate principal at Bryan Station. Fayette County students go back to school on Wednesday. This Sunday will mark the one-year anniversary of a water tower collapse in Shelby County that sent thousands of gallons of water rushing into a nearby community. And tonight, we've learned the water district was at fault. The Public Safety Commission says it has cited the U.S. 60 water district for the water tower collapse that caused 177,000 gallons of water to flood part of Wadi, damaging a church storage building, flood the post office, and nearby homes. Investigators say the water district was told it needed to fix the tank but did nothing to repair it. There were comments made by the inspector that said, okay, you've got some corrosion here. This is how you, you know, we recommend you do the following to correct the uh, corrosion. The evidence suggests that they never reviewed that tape. Officials say the water district has agreed to pay a $1,500 fine and to beef up its inspection procedures. A popular vacation spot for many folks here in the bluegrass will soon boast it has the world's fastest wooden roller coaster. Dolly Parton announced the new attraction known as the Lightning Rod today at Dollywood in Pigeon Forge. The new $22 million ride is themed after a 1950s era hot rod and will have to and will top speeds of 73 miles per hour with a 165 foot drop. The new ride should be ready for visitors in March of 2016. Dollywood opened back in 1986.